In this session, we will write a program for selection sort. In last sessions, we discussed the selection sort basics, its algorithm and time complexity. Let's start coding. Firstly, create a new file and give a name. I named it as selection sort with extension .c since it is a C program. Now that we have an empty file named selection sort .c, what is the first step to start with? Reading the input, right? Read the input. For that, let's check the algorithm and understand what are the required inputs. So here if you see in the algorithm, there are two inputs. A, array and N, which indicates size of array. In this program, we will use two variables to read these two inputs. To store array, we use variable named unsort A and to store size of array, we use variable named N. For that, first ask for size of array using printf and using scanf, read the value. Similarly, read the inputted array into variable unsort A. Next, we will write the core of the program, which is the logic. Again, refer the algorithm. First is a for loop with loop variable i. As per algorithm, i varies from 0 to n minus 1. So, when we write it in C, we will first initialize i as 0 and condition is i less than n minus 1. Let's closely analyze the condition. Here, we have i is equal to 0 and i less than n minus 1. Why is it i less than n minus 1 but not i less than or equal to n minus 1? i is equal to 0, i less than n minus 1. So we will see how many passes this for loop will go through. So consider our n is 5 in this case, okay. We will just consider that. So what is the number of passes that it will be taking? It will be 4. Why? Because number of passes is n minus 1 for a selection sort. So we will see if this i loop iterates for 4 number of times. So the first case i is equal to 0. Is 0 less than n minus 1 which is 4 is 0 less than 4? Yes. Second case i is equal to 1 is 1 less than 4? Yes. Third case i is equal to 2. Is 2 less than 4? Yes. Fourth case i is equal to 3 is 3 less than 4? Yes. For next case i is equal to 4. Is 4 less than 4? No. 4 is equal to 4. So it has satisfied 4 times. That is the i loop will execute for how many times? This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. So this i loop executes for 4 times. So what does this i loop indicates in this program? This i loop indicates number of passes. So number of passes is 4. So what if this condition was i less than or equal to n minus 1. So if the condition was i, if the condition was i less than or equal to n minus 1, then this pass will also takes place. Then this time also the fourth this time when i is equal to 4, that is i is equal to we know i is equal to 0, i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, all this will work. Condition satisfies. So when i is equal to 4, is 4 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So this time also the condition gets true and the loop will execute. That means all together the loop will execute for 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 times. But we want the loop to be executed only for 4 times. So this condition is wrong. Therefore, we have i is equal to 0, i less than n minus 1. Now check for the next step in the algorithm. Min is equal to i. Here we are using a new variable named min. Therefore, declare it in the beginning. What is the next step? Next step is to find minimum. For that, use j loop. As per algorithm, j varies from i plus 1 to n. In C, we will initialize j as i plus 1 and condition is j less than n. You can write down the value of j in each pass and check if the loop runs for correct number of times. Okay, now inside j loop we have a if condition. Write the if condition as such in the program. Exit from inner j loop. Next, we have a if condition within outer i loop. Write the condition as such and within the if loop we are performing swap. Now, let's see how swap is done. Let's suppose a and b are the two variables whose values are to be swapped. Assume initial value of a is 5 and b is 7. After swapping, a will be holding 7 and 
we will hold 5. For that, let's try assigning value of b to a first and then assign value of a to b. First take a equal to b which means value of b will be assigned to variable a. So what is the value of b? It's 7. Copying 7 to a. So here we can see a got replaced from 5 to 7. Next step is b is equal to a. What is the value of a? It's 7. So here is the problem. We lost the initial value of a which was 5. Finally, we ended up with 7 in both variables. Therefore, these steps will not give the desired output. Let's try another method in which before rewriting the value of variable a, take a copy of a. Let's see that method. For that, we will introduce a new variable called temp where we will keep a copy of variable a. That is, we will do temp is equal to a. So 5 will be copied to temp. Now that we have the backup copy of variable a in temp, we can safely move b to a. So now perform a is equal to b, so that 7 gets copied to a. As the final step, copy 5 which is in temp to b. So for that we will do b is equal to temp. Finally, we got the desired output. Value of A and B got swapped. So these are the steps done. We will code the same logic in the program as well. Coming back to code, declare an integer variable named temp and copy the remaining steps as such from the algorithm. Okay, that's done. Except from if loop, except from outer i loop. Now we have the output array in the variable unsort A. Let's print the output. Here I am copying the same code used for reading the array. Paste it and modify accordingly so that it prints the output array. We started writing the program from main function. Before that we have to add the header files as well. In this program we use some input functions like printf, scanf etc. which are defined in a file named stdio.h. So include that file in the beginning of this program. With this we have completed writing the program. Let's run it and check for errors. Okay, here we got two errors. One is variable j is not declared. So let us declare it. And second is some error in i loop. There is a typing error instead of n minus 1, I have typed it as n minus l. So just correct it. Replace l with 1. So run the program again and this time there are no errors. Let's verify the output. Okay, so here is the output, but the displayed output doesn't look good. Give space between each number and try running it again. Yes, now it looks fine. I hope you understood this program. If you have any queries, please comment below. Thanks for watching.